Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today in our uh, webinar Wednesday series. We had a couple technical issues getting started today with uh, GoToWebinar, so please bear with us here, and thank you again for your, uh, your patience. Hopefully, everybody can now see my screen. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, thanks for joining us today in our uh, weekly webinar Wednesday series. All of our webinars are recorded and complimentary and they are posted on our YouTube channel with over 600 other uh, webinars. If you're looking for the PowerPoints, they can be found over on slideshare.net. Uh, a little bit about us, we are based in downtown DC and provide uh, professional consulting services for revenue generating federal government contractors. Some of the services that we provide are listed here with a primary focus on GSA schedules. We also put on events and conferences throughout the year. You can find those listed on our website. In the event that you're selling to federal contractors, we've got a variety of advertising options open, um, including uh, posting in our newsletter, uh, as well as webinars and, uh, and on LinkedIn. Some uh, upcoming events and specialty webinars that we are participating in include the following, October 19th with our friends over at GovSpend and FedMine, uh, providing a complimentary webinar, including Q&A uh, on GSA schedules. Uh, after that, uh, the 26th, which I believe is also a Thursday, is uh, capitalizing on fiscal year 24 federal contracts. That's with uh, Visible Thread. Both of these links are on our uh, website under the event section, even though they are, uh, in fact, webinars. Uh, next year on February 15th, uh, with our friends at the Virginia PTAC, which are now uh, Apex Accelerators, we've got a marketing class for federal contractors. Uh, the Oasis Plus uh, proposal has been extended through October 20th at 4 p.m. Eastern, I believe is the time. Uh, if you're looking for assistance with um, proposal review services or anything along those lines, um, you can just send us an email and we will uh, be glad to help you with that. Okay, we want to thank our sponsors because they are the reason that our webinars are able to be complimentary. So. Uh, we want to thank our friends at Gov Events. That's the premier platform for posting events related to government and government contracting. You can find all of our webinars and our events on govevents.com, as well as recordings from our past 600 webinars. We also want to thank Tom Johnson and his team at Set Aside Alert. They're the go-to publication for contracting opportunities for small women-owned, veteran-owned, hub zone, and 8A firms. You can visit Set Aside Alert for more information. Uh, the Fairfax Economic Development Authority has an online calendar of events and webinars, and we want to thank them for posting our events and webinars on their calendar. The Virginia PTAC, uh, which I mentioned, are, is now an Apex Accelerator. They're located at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia, and they offer free one-on-one -on -one counseling to establish government contracting firms in Virginia on federal, state, and local procurement topics. If you're interested in learning more, please use the links provided to explore services, review homework recommendations, register for live training, and find useful links to agencies and other self-directed learning. Online resources and group trainings are free with no restriction on business location. One-on-one -on -one counseling is limited to eligible client companies. The Greater Reston Chamber of Commerce has a monthly government contracting council meeting where you can network with peers, learn about upcoming events and opportunities. The meetings take place the fourth Tuesday of each month at 8.30 a.m. The next one is coming up on Tuesday, October 24th. If you have questions, you can contact Alicia Field. Uh, her email address is listed there at the bottom. The Federal Business Council, uh, or FBC, uh, events are the ultimate engagement channel to bring government and industry together. 68% of government personnel report that they attend more than one event each year. FBC has worked with government and industry for 45 plus years to create gatherings where ideas are shared and to help government achieve its goals. This includes agency industry days, cybersecurity symposiums, tech expos, and offsite meetings. FBC provides full life cycle meeting planning and event management. With over 5,000 meetings under their belt, FBC has the experience, systems, and personnel to make your next event exceptional. Learn more at fbcinc.com. Uh, Bitspeed. Uh, do you want help winning government contracts? Bitspeed helps and you win. Find opportunities uh, from every federal, state, local, and public source in the U.S. Bitspeed can help you find teaming partners, incumbent point of contact, expiring contracts, and also provides you with a compliance matrix and proposal templates. Bitspeed is an official partner of the U.S. SBA 7J Management and Technical Assistance Program. Get started today at bitspeed.com. 
And the GovSpend FedMind platform, again, is the data that is behind uh, our webinar series. So the contract data, again, in 2023 webinar series is provided by GovSpend and FedMind. Uh, this, they are the leading source of data, analytics, and insight for government contractors. They integrate data from 18 federal data sources and sets and create a single database that places key data points at your fingertips. The platform now provides contract uh, opportunities within entities at federal, state, local, and educational organizations. With the acquisition of FedMine in 2021, the combined GovSpend FedMine solution empowers teams to make smarter decisions. Thank you to GovSpend and FedMine for providing the data in the webinar series this year and in previous years. Alrighty, so a little bit about the series and our schedule. Again, uh, all the webinars are complimentary and recorded. You can find them on YouTube if you subscribe to our channel. It doesn't cost you anything. You'll be alerted when the recordings are posted. If you're looking for the PowerPoint, it's listed there on uh, slide or yeah, slideshare.net, which is complimentary as well. You can log in with your LinkedIn credentials. Everything in red we have covered, and we are now on uh, General Dynamics, National Steel and Shipbuilding. We'll close out in a couple weeks with uh, GlaxoSmithKline. Uh, we're assuming that most people are attending uh, these webinars because they're interested in subcontracting with these larger businesses. So uh, we would direct you over to the FAR Part 44, so the Federal Acquisition Regulations. Uh, this is going to cover flow down clauses and things that are going to pertain to subcontractors. Uh, if you're doing any work with um, any DOD contracts, uh, you need to direct your attention to the DFARs. Um, part 244, which is the comparable uh, FAR Part 44, same topic. Uh, some other webinars that we've done on contracting, we kicked off this series in early February with a uh, very long webinar on subcontracting with the primes. It had six sessions, starting with market research all the way through to compliance. Uh, we've also uh, looked at subcontracting opportunities within all 15 federal uh, departments. So we looked at the top vendors within each department and looked at the uh, contracting opportunities within them. And then over the years, we've amassed over 30 uh, webinars on more of the strategic and tactical aspects of subcontracting. Those are all complimentary on our website, which will direct you over to our YouTube channel. Some best practices for subcontracting, you need to define what it is you do well and basically stick to doing just that and not try to be everything to everybody. Uh, you want to look for actual opportunities, meaning RFPs and RFQs where you are bringing something to the table. If you're just flapping a uh, capability statement in front of a prime with your um, and, and asking them to do your homework and where can they plug you in, uh, that's not how you're going to get anybody's attention because you're going to blend in with everyone else that's doing that. And there's thousands of companies that have Hub zone, A day, women owned, veteran owned, and all the other check boxes. So you need to bring something that is of value to the table, whether it's a relationship that you have within a department or agency, whether it's an opportunity where you can do 80% of the work and you need someone else to do another percentage, or you've got a very unique skill set or certification that the prime or the other company does not. Um, you also want to make sure that you've done your homework on the primes. You know, have they uh, recently sold off their government contracting division? Have they uh, merged with another company? Uh, have they gone bankrupt? Are they uh, in trouble legally for false claims acts? Uh, there's a variety of uh, news sources uh, via Google that you can subscribe to uh, to get news alerts and understand what's happening within these companies. Uh, you can do research uh, to look at their pricing, look at their contract vehicles, uh, and really drill down to find out where you will add specific value. Your capability statement then should be customized towards those uh, opportunities and towards the company. Once you've done all this homework and you decided there's a good fit and you actually are going to bring value and not blend in with the other companies just looking for the large business to do your homework for you, uh, then I would say that's when you need to then register in their um, in their database. So most of these companies are going to have a section on their website where you can go and register as a small business vendor. I'd also encourage you to go to LinkedIn and connect with their small business liaison officer as well as contract managers and program managers. 
Okay, so as mentioned, we're covering uh, NASCO, uh, which is part of General Dynamics, so it's National Steel and Shipbuilding Company. That's what the acronym stands for. This will take you to their website, and you can learn a little bit more about them by going to the About Us. General Dynamics is publicly traded, um, large, uh, primarily defense contractors. You can see the snapshot here of um, their uh, their current stock price, um, a little bit of fluctuation, and it looks like uh, they've done well since um, COVID. Uh, so that's the um, the max and then the, uh, the five-year um, uh, historical view. Small business registration is pretty simple to uh, become a register to become a supplier there on their website. And we are looking at their uh, SAM identifier here is listed uh, there, headquartered in um, San Diego, California for-profit uh, entity. Their LinkedIn information is pretty easy to find as well. And uh, David Carver is their um, uh, their kind of uh, head of the, the company and has been since October of 2019. He's got a um, background, obviously, in, uh, in this industry. Uh, we pulled up uh, Javier Rincon on um, LinkedIn, and there are some others who are contract managers. Uh, even though uh, Javier shows as HR, he's also um, focused on diversity and inclusion, which may get you closer to their SBLO office, or he could perhaps point you in that right direction. Uh, on the civilian side, they're not doing any work, uh, no real uh, civilian agencies buying uh, ships. On the defense side, as you can imagine, the Navy is kind of where it's at for ships. Uh, and you can look at their revenue. Um, we went back to 2020. Uh, and see the fluctuations there in their um, work with the Navy. Uh, 2024, because we are into the new fiscal year, um, is showing as zero. And keep in mind, 2023 still has uh, three months left, so uh, one quarter is missing uh, because Department of Defense contracts are typically delayed for 90 days. So keep that in mind, and I would check back here in 90 days to find out um, if they uh, want enough business to put them ahead of their numbers for from the uh, the prior year. Um, shipbuilding, I would think, would come in phases. So um, I'm sure there are big orders and kind of peaks and valleys in the business. So again, it would uh, uh, behoove you to dig a little bit deeper on uh, into some of this information. The top five NICS goes is really just one shipbuilding. It's pretty simple. You can uh, pretty much understand that um, based on the uh, the company. And uh, this chart actually goes back a little bit further to 2019, which is very helpful because um, it takes into effect the, uh, I'll call it the COVID contracting era, where uh, obviously they did see a dip from 2019 to 2020, a dip again in 2021. They're uh, back uh, stronger than ever in 2022, uh, which those numbers tower over the 2019 numbers. And uh, 2023, again, is still missing uh, three months. Uh, I'm not sure that that is going to put them over the over the um, uh, the levels that they were in 2022, but again, uh, remains to be seen. On the civilian side, again, nothing to report there. Uh, some contracting requirements here. These are going to be uh, any of the contracts valued at 750 and above. Uh, and you can see here these numbers uh, more or less mirror what we saw on the earlier slides. Nothing with independent agencies. Um, and then we look here with the uh, the agencies again. This is uh, their work is with the Navy, um, and uh, and the NAICS obviously is the uh, the shipbuilding and repair. Uh, when we look at the subcontractors here, we've got some uh, company names uh, here that uh, these are uh, subcontractors to um, uh, NASCO. And uh, nothing uh, that can prevent anybody from being a uh, tier two or, or three uh, subcontractor to these companies. So um, it looks like it's um, spread pretty well between um, uh, most of these companies here. Obviously, um, uh, Meco and, um, and Fairbanks uh, Morse are uh, kind of leading the charge. But uh, when you look at the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, uh, you know, between 40 and 65. Uh, million are not uh, bad numbers as well. And uh, this here is just uh, uh, more information on their uh, top subcontractors. 
Uh, and again, it would behoove you to dig a little bit deeper into these contracts and see if there's any work with uh, any of these companies, Emeco, Fairbanks Morse, and US uh, Joiner, as well as the other companies that were listed on the earlier slide. Uh, GWAX uh, ships are really not uh, put on um, uh, contract vehicles. However, you are going to find General Dynamics uh, because they are such a huge company that uh, a lot of their uh, other divisions will have, in fact, contract vehicles. Uh, the expiring subcontracts uh, listed here. Uh, again, it would um, be smart to take a look at the contract number and see if any of these are coming up for recompete and if there is any work that you might be able to win, perhaps as a subcontractor. Conclusions. Um, so they're uh, they're based in San Diego, as we saw on some of the earlier slides. Uh, they've got offices in San Diego, California, Norfolk, Virginia, uh, Mayport, uh, Florida, and Bremerton, uh, Washington, so West Coast, um, and obviously focused on a uh, shipbuilding. So pretty simple to understand what they do. Or pretty easy um, and very narrow and very focused. Um, and then here are just some headlines about some contracts that they uh, they recently won, the work that they've done with the Navy. And yeah, again, primarily uh, Navy contracts, or I should say only Navy contracts. That's uh, that's it for NASCO. Again, very, uh, very simple, not uh, complex, but very focused. So if this is your area of expertise, uh, we'd encourage you to dig a little bit deeper on these contracts uh, and uh, and uh, continue your relationship with them and stay alert of any news that affects the business uh, positively or negative as well. And we hope that you'll join us again uh, next week in our webinar series. Thank you.